Hi folks, today in the Eyes Amplified podcast, we have a short conversation with Vivek Madhwa. Vivek is a senior research associate with the Labor and Work Life Program at Harvard Law School and adjunct professor at Duke University and a visiting scholar of University of California at Berkeley. He is also an advisor to several startup companies, a columnist for Business Week, a contributor for a popular tech blog, TechCrunch, and writes occasionally for several international publications. Prior to join academia in 2005, Vivek was a technology entrepreneur who for founded two software companies. Great to have you here, Vivek. Thanks. Can you tell us what got you interested in research and journalism? Well, when I joined Duke University, um, my students come, started coming to me and asking questions I couldn't answer about uh, what courses they should do that make the jobs outsourcing proof and so on. So I said, hey, uh, why are these kids you know, fearful? So I started researching uh, the outsourcing industry. I started researching Indian and Chinese education, mm-hmm. and I was able to debunk many myths. And then um, I started writing about it. I had a business week column. I started writing about my research. Okay. And every time I would write something, I'd create more controversy. I started <laughs> researching more and more topics. So I broadened my research to look at entrepreneurship, immigration, mm-hmm. globalization, mm-hmm. You know, regional policies, and so on. And every time I would write something, every time I still now, if you read my stuff, it's pretty controversial. Right. Every article I write seems to get <laughs> set off the blogosphere and ignite all sorts of debates all over the place. So. I'm making an impact, and it makes me think. Every time, I, I, I learn from this. I learn from criticism. I learn from feedback. So I use my writing as a sounding board. It's not journalism. It's really you know Vivek sharing his ideas and letting people rip into him, and then learning from what they have to say. Ha, that's <laughs> nice to hear. What got you into writing for TechCrunch? Because TechCrunch has predominantly been reviewing new internet products and breaking tech news, whereas you write about education system, advisors for entrepreneurs and startups. So how did this happen? The answer is Sarah Lacy. <laughs> she came to see me at Berkeley uh-huh. and started telling me about TechCrunch. I didn't know much about TechCrunch before. Uh, you know, I mean, I had moved to Silicon Valley about 18 months ago. Mm-hmm. And Sarah knew me from Business Week. And she started telling me about this hot tech blog and so on. And I, you know, I, uh, Sarah came all the way to Berkeley to see me. So, and she was such a, one, she was such a wonderful human being. I really liked her. So I thought I'd, I'd do her a favor by writing a couple of things. And she was dead right. I mean, this thing has has reached far beyond anything I could imagine. It's read everywhere by everyone, it seems. Exactly. So it's a way of making impact. That's why I write, you know, religiously every week now. Exactly. It it does make an impact because whenever I keep, I mean, I subscribe to TechCrunch on my Outlook, so whenever I get posts from you, it's actually thought-provoking and immediately forward to my team (laughs) saying, read it, because when I forward any other post from TechCrunch about some product, they say, oh, come on, there's something better going to come. But your posts are something, I I don't get a reply immediately. I at least get it after 15, 20 minutes when they read it. (laughs) Right. I mean, so it has an impact, and that's why I write for TechCrunch. So they don't pay me anything. I just do it basically when I, when I, I, I mean, when I'm traveling, I start just writing my drafts of my articles, and I finalize them before I do them. And then what I do is I also use Twitter as my sounding board. What I do is I typically tweet that I'm thinking of writing this article, and then I get flooded with feedback from people. They start giving me their ideas, their thoughts, their stuff. PR people start pitching me stories, and I listen to them. I respond to a lot of my Twitter followers, and that helps me perfect my my TechCrunch articles. Oh yeah, I must appreciate that, uh, right. Eric, because uh, even even when I had sent you a first tweet, I got a response from you. Back. Yeah. So I really appreciate that from you. Uh, Vijay, I try to respond to every email I get. I try to respond to every tweet I get. Now sometimes I can't do that, but my goal is to respond to at least ninety five percent of all the people that that write to me. Even if they're dumb messages, I, re- I try to respond to them. That's fantastic. <laughs> right. One point which is discussed in every technical forum these days is cloud. How do you see the evolution of cloud and do you really feel that it deserves all such an attention? It's real. I mean, it's basically changing the dynamics of the industry. It's mm-hmm. moving, uh, taking care of all the infrastructure problems that you have in maintaining a data center, worrying about servers and load balancing and all the stuff you have to worry, you have to worry about before. It's all taken care of. There's still security concerns about the yeah, cloud, right. right, which need to be solved, but we're getting there very rapidly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's game-changing. Historically, India has had a lot of service-oriented IT organizations. What are the opportunities you think the Indian ecosystem has towards cloud? Could there be a business impact as it's more a service-driven? I think it's a very, very positive. I don't know why India is fearing the cloud. It's a huge opportunity to port technologies there. Think of the hundreds of billions of dollars that are going to be spent in porting technology to take advantage of infrastructure. If you're you know, a bank or if you're uh, a small business, the fact that you don't have to have servers, you don't have to worry about um, all these tiny details is a big asset. It's a huge opportunity for India to port legacy systems over to the cloud. Okay. It, I mean, it's hundreds of billions of dollars worth of business that could come to India. Well, a fact is that most of the revenues generated in service companies are because of the mana spent. Moving to cloud might just result in one resource taking care of the job which was done by 10 people earlier. What do you feel? 
That's yeah, but then, then there's a lot of work involved in porting over there. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, more porting means that companies can do more technology. They can automate more. So there's a lot more development work rather than stupid infrastructure right. maintenance work. Instead of maintenance, yeah. it's all about creating, creating a new value. Creating new value, absolutely. So there's a huge opportunity here. One last question. Being a professor, what advice do you give to all students who aspire to be entrepreneurs? Well, I advise them to learn all about entrepreneurship and then go and join a company and gain some real-world experience and then uh, develop ideas for what products to build and then become an entrepreneur. Okay. Don't become an entrepreneur straight off the bat. Get some experience even if it means working for another startup company. Thanks a lot for your time, Vivek. It was excellent talking to you. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, folks, for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed the same. Do let me know your comments at isimplified.org. Till I see you all with the next episode, it's Vijay signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>